Check, check, check one, check one. Cheese crisps, cheese crisps. But da da you're all very welcome to this morning's cheese crisps episode, folks. We are down here at Cultra. I say we, I mean the. Um, just going to get the camera set up. This is the first time I've done anything like this. So I'm going to probably look like a creep <laughs> sitting as well. <laughs> right. So um, let me just double check everything's on tight so we don't lose anything. So you're all very welcome, like I said, to this morning's cheese crisps. Um, down here at uh, Cultra here, so you're going to definitely get people walking past talking poor shit. So, I know, Graham, I know what you mean. The flan, the bottom of the flan was absolutely thugging. Whatever, Graham. Uh, so, but it came out. It's just me today. So, you're going to get a few of my songs and a few questions people have asked me to answer for you. So, it should be a better crack. I have got my cup of tea made in the van. Not bought in, that is that's special. And uh, what else? I've got biggies in the cupboard. But you're not saying that. And then, yeah, like I said, we're going to play a few songs, answer a few of your questions. People sent them in yesterday, so let me just get those up. Um, let me see where I am now. This is where you realise how old I am. I can't work social media. Uh, where would it be? Is it on there? Yes, there it is. So... But we'll start with a song, well, um, so today in the van I am playing the baby Loudon, the Sharon Loudon, the Ed Sharon Loudon, uh, some might ask me why I'm using a strap when I'm sitting down anyway, uh, I always use a strap, it just makes it feel a wee bit more secure whenever um, I'm going for it, so this is where I'm going to get pure scundered, even though I sing in front of people in bars, whenever you're... Ugh. That's whenever uh, you're there to do it and people are there to see it. So people are here to have a wee dander up the street and I'm sitting here just enjoying my morning. Now there's been some people have walked past when I've been tuning up the guitar and they've been nice to say hello in. Not that they were asked. Those wee bastards is what I call them. Um, and then... Ugh. Now the thing about this wee loudon is that it doesn't really like staying in tune that much. I know a bad workman and all that, but the heat in the van and the heat from my board is uh, killing it. So <laughs> uh, that beat string is ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, um, I will get it. I will figure it. Well, this is the boring bit. Maybe you'll say whenever I start singing is the boring bit. Anyway, first song I'm going to play because I can't play uh, other people's songs on. YouTube, because uh, you get a copyright claim and then Nightmare, they cancel your, your channel. So I'm going to play two of my own songs today. So the first one I'll explain a wee bit about. Those people who have listened to it on Spotify and stuff will know the story, but bear with me. Uh, and those people who don't, uh, you can go on and listen to it loads of times on Spotify and uh, you will be promised a room in the mansion. So this first song I wrote whenever, it's called No Tiango Masca Darte, which is Spanish for I have nothing more to give you. It is written on a ring, a gold ring that they found at a Spanish Armada shipwreck on the Eldrum coast. And uh, it was given to one of the sailors by his companion uh, before he set sail. And it says, the inscription on it says, No Tiango Mascadarte, and the gold ring on top is almost like a clattering. It's, it's two hands holding a heart. And it was the girl saying that she had nothing more to give him but, but her heart. Two tears, right? So I had seen the ring in the Ulster Museum in their Spanish Armada collection, and straight away hit with the idea of this being the song. So it's basically about him getting ready to leave the fight and then obviously the ring was found on a shipwreck, so he didn't make it home. Happy! So this song is called No Tiango Masca Darte. Hope you like it. That is still powerfully out of tune, folks. After my big dramatic entrance to it, 
that may be cut out, but who knows? The heat in the van, it's driving this wee guitar bananas. But I'd be fucked if I was sitting out with a camera outside. There we go, let's see. What the absolute fuck is going on there? Hang on. So after fucking three minutes of tuning the guitar, this is uh, No Tango Mask of Arte. I stand here at the shoreline, your lace glove in my hand. We set sail tomorrow morning. To conquer distant lands The future is uncertain Alas, I have to go You ask, when will we meet again? That's something I don't know I love my country but it's you that holds my heart I'm nothing more to give you No Tiango Mascadarte I face the danger before me Your ring upon my hand Prayers to guide and protect me there's nothing I can't withstand I long to stay by your side Kiss you softly goodnight Until I've proven otherwise I haven't earned that right I love my country but it's you that holds my heart I've nothing more to give you No Tiango Mascadarte Now the fighting it is over Tuck tail I had to go Talk we're leaving in the morning Past tantrum, then scap a flow. The future is uncertain. I fear my demise. If I don't return, I'm resting where the water meets the skies. I love my country. But it's you that holds my heart I've nothing more to give you No Tiango Mascadarte I love my country But it's you that holds my heart I've nothing more to give you no Tiango Mascadarte And the crowd went mild So that's that first song um, It's it's great, there was one night I was playing in the goat And I played, I played the song, just it was quiet night And I played the song, there was a, a couple in And they loved it and came up and asked me what the song was which made my head go right and i was like oh, yeah brew that's one of mine too it is and uh <clears throat> what was great about it was uh weeks months later uh obviously played a load of gigs in between and did other things in between and then there was another quite enough night and uh the person came up to me and out of the blue fella came up to me and he goes uh do you know Tiango Mascadarte? No Tiango Mascadarte? And I was like, Aye, how do you know it? And he was like, We were in and found out from you, and it's been on the, the list for ages now. So uh, his girlfriend or wife had it on, uh, what do you call it? 
on one of their playlists, which again, couldn't get out the door that night. So, um, yeah, so pretty, pretty decent. So if you hear or you want to hear it again, either rewind this or come up and ask me. Make me feel like a legend. So there has been a couple of people. Oh, a Lamborghini. Cultra. If you just listen to that. There you go. There's backfires and everything. Lovely. Uh, I chase him in my big red fun bus. So, uh, what else are going to say? Um, he's put me off my, my way of going there. Uh, yeah, a couple of people walked past, looked into the van, and just standard on. So, all good in the hood. But we will get to some of your questions now. So, let's see what we had. So, from... Uh, let me see... So what's so this is from G Murphy or G M dot Murphy. Uh, this one is what song? What's the song you hate having to play uh, in the bars, but people love it? Great question. There's there's some songs. There's plenty of songs. Depends what gig it is during the day. If it's your second gig, or even if you manage to push yourself through to three, which is painful. Um, but there's a song. <laughs> no matter when it's asked sometimes you go in to set up for a gig and before you've even taken the guitar out or set any gear up people are up going here yeah, do you know the Galway girl do you know the gambler and you're like aye dead on we'll get to those they used to annoy me because kind of like I don't know I don't know why they used to probably it was being a wee bit of a dick and a bit of a snob uh, but then the one that really does grind the gears because it's just shit <laughs> Uh, the what I call it, the travelling soldier. So there you go. If you've ever asked for that song, fuck you. Um, it's not that it's it is it's sentimental hogwash. Uh, no, but it's it's uh, it's just shite. It's just twee shite to me. Um, but people absolutely love it, and a special branch of people in Northern Ireland love it that we call culties. So. Uh, that's the them. That's their song. So that would be the main one, I think. Um, let me see what other songs we've had then, or other questions we've had. So from Brenda McKenna Music. Well, Brendan, how are you? Uh, he's written there. My first chords, first my first chord based song. He has written this properly. I can't read. My first chord based song was Zombie, and a riff bass was Come As You Are. So, Zombie, I love it. It's a great, great tune. I can't play riffs. I've got boxing gloves on when I play. I don't have the patience to sit and learn all the wee fiddly D bits. It was never something that computed with me. I'm sure maybe if I sat down and tried it, but it just, it doesn't interest me. And I've got that stage where I go, it's all right. It's all right what I'm doing. If I need somebody to do riffs, I'll get somebody to do riffs. And it, it's fine. Right, so if you're just a strummer like I am, that's 100%. And so's riffing, if that's your thing, knock yourself out. So anyway, his other question, or his question then at the end of that was, uh, what was the first thing you learned to play on the guitar? So the first thing I learned to play was when I was 16 when I got my first guitar. And it was Christmas. Uh, my dad took me and my brother out, uh, out into the back of the house and hit us with guitars. <laughs> No, he uh, he taught us a song called Cool Water and it was again I don't think I can play it but I can do a wee bit maybe just that sort of cool clear water 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 so see if that gets copyrighted I'm sniggered so but a cracking a cracking tune and my dad and his brothers all played it and sang it together harmonies everywhere guitar going and it sounded great so that was my first one i think then the one then that i wanted to learn like everybody else when they're 16 was wonderwall it was probably only out <laughs> whenever i was 16 so um or a couple of years beforehand so that was one uh but again i then like most people when they're starting to learn to play the guitar you have to build up your wee if that will focus you have to build up your calluses on your fingers which is basically like your granny's heel on the tips of your fingers so you can't feel it. A couple of wee tips, I'm not telling you them because if you stick your fingers together with glue then you'll blame me. So, But um, things that I did were like methylated spirits, just dipping our surgical spirits, surgical spirits, dipping your finger into those. Uh, probably didn't matter, didn't matter. You have to play, you have to practice and that's just one of those things. Uh, so 
but when I was 16, the guitar that I had, uh, I just couldn't stick the pain. And I was 16, so there was a computer sitting there too, and there was girls out in the street, so we went and chased them instead. But stick with it, stick with it, and you will get past that pain barrier. I cannot feel anything in those fingertips now. So let's see then, other questions. So Connor Army, who is Connor, who I play with on a Friday and Saturday night in the Thirsty Goat, best bar in the town. How you doing? Uh, so a wee doggy came by there, and they were a wee bit perturbed. I don't know. Anyway, uh, probably going to look at that header there. So uh, Connor has asked, can we wear shorts at this week's gig in the Thirsty Goat? I'm going to say I'm wearing my jeans, because nobody needs to see my pegs, and you do what you need to do, son. All right, um, I will have a fan. Uh, the front row. <laughs> so uh, you do what you want, uh, and scare everybody with those pegs that stick out from your shorts. I've seen finer legs sticking out of a bird's nest, mate. Uh, then who else have we got? What was the most ridiculous qu request you have been asked at a gig? LOL. That is from Sarah Alexandra to it. Sarah, uh, the most ridiculous request I've had, and it happens most weeks, is somebody shouting from the crowd, take your top off. And I'm like, no mate, nobody wants to see that. So, but then you have people asking you for songs uh, that uh, make, or obvious, they obviously mean something to them, they're special to them. Uh, they remind them of a person who might not be here, but that is not the vibe on a Friday and Saturday night, you know, Tears in Heaven and stuff like that. So those songs would be a bit, you would need to pick your moments. Uh, I keep getting asked for that uh, as a bits and pieces and Maniac. She's a maniac. You're a maniac if you think I'm singing that. Beyonce, I keep getting asked for Beyonce, and I'm like, I, I don't listen to Beyonce. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the weirdest one is take your take your tap off I'm like no no I do not need to blind the viewers so um, what other questions have we got here Curtis Dara has asked me why did you pack in teaching uh, and then to this day I still use the pink fluff blue fluff joke of the podcast cheers Curtis uh, I used to teach Curtis so back in the back in the day and uh, the reason I packed in teaching was for the music just I have always played music always loved playing it and was I'm fortunate enough to get uh, regular enough gigs and uh, enjoy it so much that I thought I'm going to take the chance now it wasn't an easy decision to make it was it was difficult it was tricky it took me about three years to actually fully pull the, the pin uh, pull the hammer pull the trigger and uh, once it did it I knew it was right. Three weeks after I did it, and you're shit, to be honest, because uh, you're going from full-time protected job to... Uh, that you worked hard to get and keep and all that, and then you're pulling it based on a feeling, on a hunch, on 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 a dream, on something that you're going, is this going to work? I, you know what I mean? Who, how would I know? Um, but uh, you have to go with your gut, and I firmly believe that you go with your gut and you make it work. So if there's something there, there's people whenever I was leaving asked me, you know, what was I doing? And I said, look, well, what, what would you want to do? And I can remember one person saying, a lot of people went, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, I never really know what I want to do. And you're going, right, fair enough. You know, try these things and it might help you get there. Um, and then people are, you know, people are happy to do what they're doing anyway. So I'm not saying do what I do by any stretch of the imagination but if you can and you, you keep waking up in the morning feeling like I need to be doing something else then you have to give it a shot I think that would be my uh, my reasoning on it um, and with music I kept coming back to it all the time going right I need to try this and it's not to say I'm ever going to be number one or I'm going to be uh, everybody's favourite musician I don't think that's going to happen right but I can figure out where I'm happy and what level I'm happy at doing that. And if you can make your living at it, then so be it. Um, yeah, so that's why that happened. Uh, as for the blue fluff and pink fluff joke, is what is what's pink and fluffy? 
pink fluff. Well, it's blue and fluffy. Gee, some of you say blue fluff. It's pink fluff holding its breath. Ba -da! Da -da 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 -da! So, there you go, there's that one. Uh, then, other things to talk of. There's a couple of other questions there, and I will get them. One's actually very funny. Uh, let me see what the other one is. Yeah, right, I'll get to those other two questions. Well, there's one question there, and it says, and it might lead me on to this next wee bit, uh, whose music has inspired you the most? I think the biggest, like I said when Ma Bart was on last week, the biggest inspiration to me doing music was my mum and dad, and them singing whenever we had birthday parties, uh, any party, like uncle, aunts and uncles coming up for a Friday night, um, people visiting over from England, Australia, whatever, you always, my dad always got the guitar out and sang, and my mum sang with him, and great times, and then we all had our party pieces. So that was always, and there was always music on in the house and stuff like that, so that would have been definitely the biggest influence. And then we were in the choirs in school, and my mum and dad, you know, checking us out before we went out to perform, and we were on our wee stage, which was the, the mat in front of the fire. And... Uh, if you really had the balls on, you got up on the, the hearth and thought you were God's gift. Uh, so then, uh, what else was there? Then, then there was obviously then people who would have been an inspiration to you. So things like Christy Moore, definitely a big inspiration on me. Um, I had lots of his music when we went over to England, over to university, and I, I listened to that quite a bit. Um, I didn't usually cried my eyes out that I wasn't here, but uh, yeah, so his music really. Then we played Irish music, we were in a band, me and my brother and my friend uh, Michael were all in a band called the Sons of Ushna, which we thought meant the Sons of Ulster. Tell me if it's any different, I think it was the Sons of Ulster. And we would have played around the Students' Union, up in the Irish bar, whatever, and done things like that, and uh, played at Glastonbury. Who knew? Uh, two thousand and three, but that's a that's a covert operation that we did. Went down and managed to play a wee bit down there. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another wee doggy. So uh, yeah, so we did things like that. Uh, the other biggest influence would have to be David Gray. I don't know people are throwing up into their mouths right now, but his music always hit me. His lyrics, I, I like the lyrics of songs. Uh, I also, you know, I also like the music of it. But my main thing, the thing that pulls me in this song, are the lyrics. So, David Gray, you know, it's it's basically poetry, in set the set the tune. Um, I don't think there's people there that would wouldn't like his music because it's not music musical enough for them. It's not complicated enough for them. Um, which people have said to me before, but then whenever I was doing work at uni and stuff, then David Gray was always always on to the consternation of my other peers, and they used to want to beat the shade out of me for having it on constantly. But it always just set me in the right frame of mind to do a bit of work. Um, and at the time, White Ladder was out, um, round about ninety eight, ninety nine. Went to watch him. Well, we went to work at his gigs in Marty Park in Dublin. Uh, on the in the in the grounds we were doing the pour, pouring the beer for people. So there was three there was two Van Morrison concerts and then there was three David Gray concerts straight after it. At that time I really hadn't known an awful lot about him. I'd heard Babylon and another couple of the tunes but not really but see when you watch the guy playing, there was one night there was a, a storm. The second night I think it was was a storm. And the tarps were getting ripped off and the lights were getting rained on and all sorts of stuff. The crowd was going mad. And then he had to step off the stage and everybody thought that's it, it's cancelled. And he came back out with a hard hat on and the place lit. And he went there not taking me off the stage. And it was fantastic. And the crack we had at them, uh, I can remember one guy that we were with uh, shouting out the most ridiculous things, you know. David, you're the butter on my coconut finger and all this kind of stuff. People around us laughing their heads off. And then the next day I went down, I saw that he had gone over to the, the tower, the sound tower, and uh, I legged it. Bit two security guards over, 
and they were chasing me and I was like David tell them to clear off and he's like yeah yeah he's alright and Stu talking to him he came over he signed t-shirts he was sound and to my way of thinking I told him about Belfast and how much people up here loved him and that he should come up and do a gig by the next November where was David? just saying don't know if it's anything to do with me so uh, that would be the main influences then you get you know you pick up from playing with other people um, maybe how to how to do like Irish folk music a bit better how to do uh, I, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't personally say I'm a great guitar player other people go but you're you do what you do and I'm like yeah that's it I do what I do I'm not big headed about it um, and it's just through sitting down and, and practicing the songs that's a fucking crooked scene how you do it so as, yeah as I was saying you go back to uh, music that, and that's what I love about music is you can go back to it at any stage and listen to an artist that you used to listen to or you can't even remember listening to so the other day George Michael came on the radio and I was just blown away I was like straight back into the 80s and remember my sister sticking on the must have been the tape might have been the radio it it possibly could have been a record it could have been a record and popping away with her sunglasses on and acting Egypt and singing under her brushes and all that kind of stuff so um, but then you know you listen to the likes of Erasure again and you're like unbelievable uh, Garth Brooks would have been another one I would have listened to quite a lot um, probably coming from the stuff that uh, my dad would have had, had in the house sort of uh, the likes of uh, Slim Whitman and the Everly Brothers and things like that and then sort of then our ones would have brought Garth Brooks into the house and of course he was massive here at the time so um, then your, your your taste change and you go with different things most of the stuff I play now are the songs that people I could I would love to sit and play David Gray from start to finish but it's not what people want to hear all the time so you just give them what they want to hear um, and then you can really get into those songs and have a great night with people and that's what it's all about so um, I think some of the best definitely the best concerts I've been to um, would have been David Gray when he played in Bangor Abbey uh, I also saw him in uh, Downpatrick Church in Downpatrick but the Bangor Abbey one was something else it really was the the one on down patrick he was solo which was great to see as well and we're really really close um so you really got to see the workings of it um where bangor abbey though just first time doing that small intimate venue uh gig and he played every single song that you would want to hear if you want to hear my favorite one of his is a song called nemesis and it is cracking listen to the lyrics of it again that's what I'm into the lyrics of it just will blow your mind when you realise that your own worst enemy is yourself so anyway uh, happy uh, yeah so the, then you go to gigs like um, I was at uh, Oxygen and uh, Slain that was pretty good that was watching you too who again I wouldn't have been a massive fan of I, I'm interested in their music, but uh, they they killed it. But the ones it was the Chili Peppers were on before them, and I think then you two came flying round in a helicopter above the stage, and the helicopter landed down the back of it, and you're just like lads. So if you're waiting on me and Army arriving on Friday and Saturday night, look up. Uh, maybe I'm sailing down the front wall of the goat. Um, yeah, so those things those things are interesting to me that uh, no matter what I always 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 come back to music I've had other things where I've gone on and went I was interested in that came back to music was interested in that came back to music music's always been there so it, it's always been a massive part of what I do and who I am I suppose so the last question for today is uh, if asked for grace will you play it Oh, controversial, controversial. When you when you strip it all back, it's a it's a song about two people, you know what I mean, uh, who were deeply in love. You know what? How I'm going to leave this one is 
Will I play Grace? Will I play Grace of Ashford? And the only thing I'm going to say is, come up and ask me at a gig, and I'll tell you if I'm going to play it or not. There you go. Oh, boom! So you're you're on your own fat there. So uh, the last song I'm going to play for you today is again one of my own, and it's called Watch Listen. Now. This might take me another fortnight to tune the guitar, but we'll see. Now, the thing about Watch Listen was... uh, I'll tune this first, and then I'll tell you. Uh, So, Watch Listen was written about uh, sort of accountability, I suppose, uh, and during the time when the Americans and uh, Britain were leaving the Afghanistan war, the Afghan war, uh, when they just pulled out and fucked everybody to the wind, um, it pissed me off in a massive way. And uh, what I caught, and how you did, and I couldn't sit and watch the things on the TV, although that's all I could do, you know what I mean? Or felt that's all I could do, that's all I did do. Um, but I felt enough rage and anger that I had to write a song about it. And it's not just about the people that were in Afghanistan being abandoned either. It's about the military forces that were abandoned by their own countries, I think, um, and how they're treated. and you know sent off to these places, sent off to places to fight wars, that, um, anyway, that's the political side of it all, and I don't agree with any of it at all, but the one thing I could do was watch and listen, and listen out and watch out for the lies that people are spun, day in, day out, so that's basically what this song's about, so it's about uh, the guy who's sitting in a, a metal box somewhere in California uh, flying a drone and then the devastation that's caused so this is called Watch Listen Take Junior from a sandbox and teach him to fly then stick him in a tin can say he's the guy to laze all the targets then wave them goodbye not a minute to waste or a moment to cry strap on your gun son it's boots in the sand you're here to bring order and lend them a hand hearts and minds to help understand that it's mission accomplished so bring out the band glory through shame was that the vision Trial of the innocent, was that the mission? This isn't real, it's just television. Bear witness to it all, watch, listen. After years in the quagmire, you up sticks and go. Disappear and act, it's all part of the show. Risking it all with the dice that you throw. Cash in your chips, making friends with your foe Afghan poppies, is that what you smoke? Cozy up to the wasp nest you decided to poke Your word is your bond, as solid as oak Restoring the peace, well that was a joke Glory through shame, was that the vision? Trial of the innocent, was that the mission? This isn't real, it's just television Bear witness to it all, watch, listen Still in his tin 
and he continues to serve The reaper will sow what he holds in reserve He'll gather the harvest of that he deserves Remember the young ones who stretched out a hand No hope for the future cause you played in their sand It's easy to leave when it isn't your land Fire and forget, control and command Glory through shame, was that the vision? Trial of the innocent, was that the mission? This isn't real, it's just television Bear witness to it all, watch, listen Watch, listen Scundered for me, right? People are walking past here looking in and I'm pretending not to look and then jumbling up the words Anyway, anyway folks that is the first solo one. I'm gonna be doing more of these So fire in your questions things that you want to know um, Any other suggestions if you have a suggestion of a place that's near the water that I can park and not have Posh people running around me thinking I'm a dick. Uh, let me know and uh see where we take it from there but thanks for tuning in i will leave you with another little look to the uh to the horizon as it were bye bye